today on Rappler. 14 people are dead as the standoff in Sabah ends in a shootout. Opposition Una criticizes Team Pinoy defense President Aquino's handling of the Sabah standoff. And Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI leaves the Vatican and steps down as Pope. <coughs> Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Malaysia says the 17-day standoff between its security forces and a group of Filipinos claiming Sabah is over. At a press conference Friday, Sabah Police Chief Datu Hamza Taib says 12, quote, Sulu raiders and two Malaysian security forces are killed in the attack in Lahad Datu. Earlier, Malaysian Ambassador Datu Mohamed Zamri Kasim tells Philippine Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario only three were killed, one civilian and two Malaysian policemen. Kasim says 10 followers of Sulu Sultan Jamalul Kiram III also surrender. Rajamuda Kiram and around 180 followers sailed to Sabah on February 12 to pursue their claim on the island. The updated death toll reflects the earlier estimate of Sulu Sultanate spokesman Abraham Idjirani, who says Malaysian snipers fired first, killing 10 of the Sultan's men and injuring four. But in a tweet, Malaysia's Home Affairs Minister Hishamuddin Hussein disputes the claim, saying the Kiram group started the gunfight. DFA spokesman Raul Hernandez says the Philippines issues a note verbal asking Malaysia for a full report about the assault. The Philippine government also asked Malaysia to allow its ship to dock in Lahad Datu so it can bring the wounded home. Our social media post of the day is from Rain Reformado from Facebook. She says in Filipino, claiming Saba will not be easy, especially because the Philippines lacks military power. This should be done through diplomacy. It will not happen overnight. Members of the administration coalition Team Pinoy believe the Saba standoff does not reflect on President Benigno Aquino's leadership. On the sidelines of a coalition sortie in Kandaba town in Pampanga, bets see the conflict as the fault of self-proclaimed Sulu Sultan Jamalul Kiram and not Aquino's. They say Kiram should have heeded the president's call to withdraw their forces from Saba. Senatorial bet Ramon Magsaysay Jr. says if there's a firefight, that is Mr. Kiram's problem. Kiram complains about Aquino's lack of assistance in the Saba standoff. He says Aquino sides with the Malaysians over the Filipinos. Administration bet Senator Coco Pimentel agrees the government should serve its people but defends the president on his decision to ask Karim to leave Saba. Let us incorporate in the teaching of Philippine history, the teaching of the legal as well as historical basis of the Saba claim. So it will let us assure the heirs of the Sultan of Sulu that this particular claim will not be forgotten by the Filipino people by teaching the historical basis. And then, uh, that is, this is aside from the diplomatic work that is needed. Team Pinoy campaign manager Senator Franklin Drilon says the president is pursuing efforts to peacefully end the situation. If, if their purpose is only to surface uh, their, their claims, I think they have achieved this purpose. And therefore, it's about time for them to come home and, uh, uh, and, and remove their followers from harm's way. Senatorial candidates of the United Nationalist Alliance, or UNA, says the Aquino administration could have avoided violence in Sabah. Senator Gregorio Onasan says President Aquino sent the Kiram group mixed signals when he asked Kiram's group to stand down, but also reminded them of possible violations of the Constitution. Onasan says it's like being made to choose between the devil and the deep blue sea. You go home, but we'll file charges against you. In a press statement, former Senator Richard Gordon calls the administration's response, quote, severely woeful, anti-Filipino, and subservient to Malaysia. Confident of his popularity in Pampanga, President Aquino criticizes the past administration in a rally in San Fernando town as he campaigned for his senatorial candidates. Natasha Gutierrez files this video blog. A royal country more like Aquino country. This is the belief of Team Pinoy, the coalition of President Benigno Aquino III, as it visits Pampanga, the home province of former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. 
it makes sense. While Arroyo is the representative of Pampanga's 2nd District, the province overwhelmingly voted for Aquino in the 2010 presidential race, garnering 36.5% of the votes cast here. Perhaps because of it, Aquino and his bets are unafraid to slam Arroyo, something the opposition United Nationalist Alliance chose not to do in their last visit here. This is what they had to say. Ang katahanado ko minsan, eh mga nagsasabi kasi mo, huwag tinarong na isang mga pangyari, ang pamilyang pampaga. Ayaw nga sa mga nasasagot natin, ito ang kanunaw ang ibig ka nila, asaan na raw ang pagsunod ng mga kapampaga dito. Sabi ko, posible yan tayo. Kilala ko ang mga kapampaga, kung pumanig sila dati sa demokrasya, pagkakaisa at pagpapago, ah, dyan, nasakala, katapatan at katotohanan lamang susuporta ang mga kapampaga. dito sa Pampanga, at least as good as, if not better than 2010. Kasi sa 2010, pumasok ako dito sa Pampanga. I was number 12. Kaya, ganun ako kasaya bumalik dito sa Pampanga at uh, magpakilala ulit sa aking mga kabalian dito dahil naniniwala ako, kasama namin ang Pampanga sa daang matuwid. While in the province, Aquino refuses to talk about the standoff in Saba, an issue of concern. In a further sign of unity, campaign manager Franklin Drillon said the coalition will take a common stance and back the president in his decisions regarding the conflict. Betts believe the situation in Saba does not reflect badly on Aquino. I know the president had nothing to do with uh, all of a sudden Filipinos being there in uh, Saba. Uh, basta we will ha the foreign policy and uh, matters like this should be under the leadership of the president. So we will support whatever is his uh, solution, whatever he, is his decision. But at reality po yun, ano? so, sometimes there are things beyond our control. Pampanga has 1.2 million voters in the province. Team Pina remains confident of its chances here, and rightfully so, if the reception of the people and the 2010 results are of any indication. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Pampanga. For the opposition, it helps to have friends not just in high but in local places as well. While Una only has a few candidates in Cavite, which has 1.6 million voters, it counts personal allies and friends from other parties as key players in its ground war. Senator Gringo Anasan enjoys the support of 7th District Representative Jesus Crispin Ramulla of the Nationalista Party. Onasan says, quote, We are crossing party lines because, first of all, there's no political party system in our country. Zambales Representative Mitos Magsaysay echoes Onasan. She says, quote, Leaders will not support you based on party lines, but they will support you because they are your personal friend. Magsaysay says this is why Team Pinoy cannot ensure a straight 12 to 0 for its slate. Because in Cavite and other provinces, many leaders were once allies of UNA members in past administrations. On the first day of Women's Month, Rappler's editor-at-large, Maritas Vitog, talks about the growing role of women in politics and business. Here's her video blog. South Korea now has a woman president, a first for this East Asian country. South Korea joins the Philippines, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Indonesia, and Thailand, Asian countries which have had female heads of state. This month of March, as we celebrate women, we have reason to rejoice. In our country, women who aspire for high office both in government and corporations encounter few obstacles. In 2012, the World Economic Forum ranked the Philippines among the top 10 in terms of women legislators, senior officials and managers, and number of years with a female head of state. We're also among those with the highest percentage of women in boardrooms. To all these women, it is not much to us to give back to the community, mentor our successor generation, create opportunities for growth for other women. This is the best gift you can give the nation. This is Marites Vitug for Vitug Vlogs. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI leaves the Vatican for the last time as Pope on Thursday, riding a white helicopter for the papal res summer residence of Castel Gandolfo near Rome. He officially resigned as Pope at 8 p.m. Benedict thanks his supporters and promises to work for the common good. He says, You know that this day is different for me than the preceding ones. I am no longer the Supreme Pontiff of the Catholic Church. He also posts his last tweet saying, Thank you for your love and support. May you always experience the joy that comes from putting Christ at the center of your lives. Earlier on Thursday, Benedict met 144 cardinals to bid them farewell and to vow obedience to the next pope. 
In a few days, the Cardinals will hold the conclave to elect Benedict's successor. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, a World Health Organization report says the trauma caused by radioactive emissions of the Fukushima Daiichi power plant two years ago is worse than the actual threat of human diseases. The report says the risk of contracting certain cancer types was small, but the psychological effects of the disaster, fear, anxiety, and depression can be worse because radiation is invisible. The Fukushima disaster was prompted by an 8.9 magnitude earthquake that generated a tsunami of historic proportions on March 11, 2011. At number eight, the American soldier accused of leaking secret documents to WikiLeaks pleads guilty to 10 of 22 charges against him. But private first class Bradley Manning denies the most serious charge, aiding the enemy, which carries a potential life sentence. Manning says he divulged documents to WikiLeaks to spark public debate about U.S. military action. He's accused of sending out thousands of battlefield reports from Afghanistan and Iraq while he was based in Baghdad. If found guilty, he faces 20 years in prison. At number nine, the medieval king Richard the Lionheart, known for his courage as a military leader, was not killed by a poisoned arrow. Forensic experts did not find poisonous metals in their analysis of the king's mummified heart. Experts did find pollen, which suggests Richard died at the end of April, May, or the start of June, when grains from poplar and bellflowers are in bloom. And at number 10, a study by a German research institute finds older pessimists tend to live longer than optimists. The researchers say it's possible a pessimistic outlook leads elderly people to take care of their health better. The study says older people who are optimists face a 10% higher mortality risk and are more prone to developing physical health problems. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. While Technology Showcase Mobile World Congress is happening in Barcelona, Samsung holds its own event in Jakarta, introducing a slew of the devices it hopes would shape a new era of technology. Michael Joss Villanueva reports. At the Samsung Forum in Jakarta, all sorts of technology is on display. There are plenty of devices for the home. Televisions, washing machines, microwaves, even this robotic vacuum cleaner. But the centerpiece is this massive 85-inch 4K ultra-high-def television. The TV is built into an easel-like stand, reminiscent of a large painting at a gallery. You can't walk into a store and buy one of these. It's only available by special order for an also massive price tag, 1.6 million pesos or $40,000. Not as big but equally impressive is this 55-inch multi-view 3D HD TV that allows a group of people to watch up to four programs at the same time on one TV set. You'll need these special 3D glasses with built-in earphones. Your program of choice is the press of a button away. This TV will be available in the Philippines this August for 750,000 pesos or around $18,000. Still a bit pricey, but just imagine you'll never have to fight over the remote again. Also grabbing our attention is this 45mm prime lens. Made specifically for Samsung's NX300 mirrorless camera, this lens allows you to take three-dimensional photos and video. You'll no longer need expensive equipment to shoot your own 3D movie. And for normal use, you can also switch back to 2D mode with a flick of a switch. Finally, we got our hands on this 8-inch tablet, the Galaxy Note 8. Not available till the second quarter of 2013, this iPad mini competitor stands out because of its ability to take phone calls, its optional expandable memory, and its accompanying S Pen, perfect for drawing or taking notes. Whether or not we can take home many of the gadgets that we saw at the show floor today, it gives us a glimpse into what's possible through technology and how advances such as this can chart the course of the next few years of our life. Michael Josh Villanueva, Rappler, Jakarta.